Hello, hello there, it is eight o'clock UK time and we are live. So hello everybody, happy Wednesday as I like to say and welcome back to this month's One Step Workshop. So I'll give you a few minutes to come and join me. Hopefully we've got a good dynamic group discussion going on this evening. And um, first of all, I wanna say a massive welcome to all of you who are new to the group. I've seen lots of you joining recently and while you hop on, do say hello and tell us where you're from. Shaniqua, great to see you. I'm happy to see you again, it's been a while. Um, so I was just saying that we've had lots of new members in the group, really excited to see the group growing. We're at 700 plus members. It's been growing as I was posting that earlier today. So a massive thank you to all of you new and old, if I can call you old, those of you who've been part of my community for a while. And um, by the way, of course, and I know some of you have been doing this, if you know someone who could benefit from the group, then please invite them to join. I'd love to grow the group and have even more people coming in, joining these lives in particular. Um, it really helps to have all this diverse experience and skill sets and knowledge and um, get a really good dynamic discussion going. So if you do know anyone, then do by all means invite them along. Great, happy to have a good lunch break, Shanuka. That's ideal and that's perfect for the topic that we have today as well. So again, massive welcome to the new members. And um, for those of you who don't know me so well yet, my name is Anna Lundberg. Um, I'm the founder of One Step Outside. You can see for the eagle-eyed among you who have been part of the community, we'll see I've got a new wall sticker. So I've got my favorite quote here behind me and a new plant as well because I managed to kill the other plant. So as it turns out, you need to water your house plants now and then. So by the way, top tip. Um, I tend to, um, in the past, I've always had plastic plants for that reason, but I think it's a bit sad. So better to have some light and energy and some feng shui, right? So new plant, new sticker, and we're ready to go. Um, so anyway, as I said, I'm Anna Lindberg, founder of One Step Outside. Um, you may have come across my book leaving the corporate nine to five stories from people who've done it and how you can too and this is in fact the theme that we're talking about these past few weeks and in the coming months as well leaving the corporate nine to five a big one something that I know is um, very topical for many of you so hopefully that's something that we'll be digging into more as well and you may also have come across my podcast so the reimagining success podcast if you're into podcasts I know I am I'm subscribed to about 100 of them and um, then I'd love for you to check it out if you're already listening and you're getting value from it then please do leave a review and again share it with someone you know um, if you think somebody else could benefit from an episode or from the whole um, topic but I'm really enjoying doing that and it's just one more way in which you can consume content on the go and um, today we're talking as we were last month in fact about sort of managing your time effectively essentially um, and you know finding ways to consume content in a little break when you're hanging up the laundry or you're commuting or at the gym or whatever and um, is all good news so hopefully the podcast is one more channel for you to do that so again, massive welcome to the new members. A few things for you and in fact for all of you to know because um, a few things are changing around here in the group. Um, first of all, as you've seen perhaps and as you will notice this evening, we've started this new monthly series. So the One Step Workshop is a monthly live training instead of the weekly topics we were doing before um, and we'll have this every month. Surprise, surprise. The good news is that you can suggest any topic that you want for a future training and we'll also have a poll each month that you can vote for. So this topic that we're doing tonight, how to manage your side hustle alongside a demanding corporate job, is something that was voted for. Um, the one that came very, very close as well is something that I promised to cover. It was how to start a business with a little budget. So it'll be relevant for this evening too. And as ever, you can always ask your questions anyway. But this is a great opportunity for you guys to vote for your topics, to come along live and ask questions. Now, if you can't join live, and I know several of you did tell me that you're either working or in the wrong time zone, then of course you can watch the replay. So hello to all of you who are watching the replay. And um, please do still pop in your questions and comments as if you're watching it live, and um, because I can still see your comments and, and answer your questions after the fact. So also for those of you who are watching live, if you have any follow-up questions, of course, do keep um, commenting and tag me if you find that I'm not answering you then it may be that I've just missed it so do let me know any questions so again welcome to new members monthly live training the topic at the moment is leaving the corporate nine to five exciting news hopefully is that we have another five day challenge coming up next month it's been a while since we did these and we did a few earlier this year on client generation personal branding the icky guy and um, I think a lot of you in fact were part of this so hopefully this is exciting news for you guys too I love these challenges it's basically like this workshop but on steroids because we'll have five nights together lots of bonus content worksheets 
and again I'll be sure to in fact tomorrow I'll probably put up a poll to get you guys to vote for a topic so again this is your opportunity to vote for your topics that are the most urgent things in your mind in your business in your life at the moment and we'll make sure that we um, answer as many questions as we can so without further ado those are the key points I think the monthly live training um, I should also say, by the way, if you are new, you should have received a message from Cara. The wonderful Cara Cahill is um, messaging you, welcoming you into the group and just making sure that you have everything you need. So do check your message requests if you haven't seen those. They tend to go into this um, sort of um, no man's land where I also don't see them very often. So do make sure you're checking, I think, on a desktop um, to see those messages. So Cara is part of the team and um, she'll be in here posting as well. So do say hi to her. Um, and she and I are here to answer your questions as well. So I want to dive into the topic. And again, I've seen Shaniqua say hi. The rest of you would love to hear who you are and where you're watching from. Oops, computer had issues to the phone. Don't worry, there's always some tech issues. In fact, I was interviewing Shaniqua right here a few months ago and we had some massive tech issues. So unfortunately, the universe doesn't always cooperate, does it, Shaniqua? Um, Cara, hello, we were just speaking about you. So great to have you on as well. This is the lovely Cara that we were talking about who is welcoming you all into the group, who's posting and helping me with 100,000 different things in the business. So massive thank you to Cara. And um, now you all know who she is. You can look out for a message from her as well. So on to tonight's topic, and this was voted for by a big bunch of you. And um, again, it came um, in close first position. There was a second topic, which is relevant as well, but I thought this one was quite an interesting one. And I think very relevant to us as we go about leaving the corporate nine to five. So throughout the session, do throw in your questions. If you have anything already that's on your mind, make sure that you tell me now so we can um, make sure we cover it before the end of the hour. I do tend to go on for about an hour, so I'll try to keep it as succinct as possible. It is a pretty big topic. I've written another blog post about this in the past, so I'm happy to provide some extra resources to you. But again, this is the interactive session, your opportunity to really ask questions and get sort of one-on-one -on -one feedback. And of course, benefit from the group, because that's the fantastic um, benefit of being part of this community, that you guys all can bring, again, your own experiences and knowledge um, to the forefront and help each other out as well, to encourage each other, support um, and challenge each other as well. So first of all, um, again, this is a big topic, managing your side hustle. We're not going to get into should you have a side hustle and why side hustles are good and so on. I have written about that in the past. So if you're not sure what a side hustle is or if you're interested in starting one, not sure how to go about it, let me know, comment below and I will send you a couple of articles to get you started. Um, but essentially the, the um, age old debate is always do you quit your job cold turkey? In fact, I did this back in 2013. I took the so-called leap of faith. Um, I quit without any kind of other job mapped out or um, a business plan or anything like that. I should say that I was single, I had no mortgage, I was living in a very cheap flat with cheap Ikea furniture, I had no partner, no children, no dog, no Volvo, whatever it was, so it was relatively easy or risk-free for me to leave that behind. Um, I also did have a whole amount of savings that I can assure you that I used up a lot of um, over the years. So, you know, taking the leap, there are many benefits to that. For example, it feels amazing. You might get to that point when you really wanna quit and throw everything away and tell your job, a job, tell your boss, in fact, where to go. Um, it also means that you have a lot of time and energy for your business. And again, the topic tonight is how to manage your side hustle, which is all around, I think, time and energy. And it can be very tempting then to go all in um, in order to free up your time, to free up so you can really focus all your effort on that side hustle and make it into your full-time business. So the one option is to take that leap of faith. On the other hand, you have the side hustle. Now, again, the benefits are that you can keep a safe and secure job alongside your new business. You can give yourself the time to explore, to see really if this is a business that you're A, interested in, B, has legs, that there are actually clients out there who are willing to pay and then it's viable and so on. And to spend time, and we'll talk about this later, on building the audience, getting clients and so on. So those are a few benefits to side hustle. In fact, out of those of you watching, are you, do you have a side hustle alongside a corporate job? Are you thinking about starting a side hustle? What's the situation? I'd love to hear what your current situation is. Um, and again, if you have any specific questions, but let me know um, if you have any particular 
um, situation um, and if you all do have a side hustle, which I imagine you do because why otherwise would you be here, but it'd be interesting to hear. Again, I um, ironically didn't have a side hustle. I did go full on with my um, with quitting my job. However, um, that many of you may be in a similar situation to me, which is that although I didn't have the full-time job, I certainly balanced two different things. So I continued with my more corporate marketing work on the one hand, while trying to increase my coaching and my writing. And I think that scenario is quite um, often the case for many of us. Um, I have a client who was doing a lot of PR, for example, full-time PR, gradually trying to increase her shiatsu or someone who's doing, um, you know, business, some kind of business marketing, whatever it might be, and trying to launch their photography business. Often, whether it's a full-time job or just um, sort of part-time or freelancing work, we have that kind of not as sexy, um, not as sort of passion fueled, not ikigai, if you're familiar with the concept of ikigai, it's not our dream, but it is the stuff that pays the bills. So that could be a full-time job, or it could be, um, you know, just more of that sort of corporate um, day job type of thing. So Holly's saying you have a side hustle alongside teaching in a secondary school, fantastic. And great to um, have you join as well, Holly. And Shaniqua's got a baby side hustle with a full time. <laughs> That's interesting, Shaniqua, baby side hustle. Does that mean you wanna grow into a full grown adult or you wanna keep it as a baby? And because of course the options with a side hustle are to keep it in fact forever as a side hustle, um, so it's something that you could continue as part of a portfolio career. And again, to draw it back to what I've been doing, I love coaching and writing, and this is really, this is my dream business. This is what I want to do. And um, however, I do still do quite a bit of marketing, consulting and training, um, which I enjoy, in fact. Um, so I thought I was gonna let go of that piece, but I've really molded, remolded that, I guess, redesigned it to work in the way that I want to work and run my business, so it's no longer going to the client's office, but it's fully location independent. There's much more writing and training and coaching, which I love doing, rather than going in and working on, you know, PowerPoint presentations and Excel sheets, which is what I always sort of reduce corporate work to, which I know is um, simplifying a little bit. Um, so, you know, there can be something, there is something to be said for continuing your side hustle permanently, or at least for a long time. However, many of you, and again, let me know what your situation is. Is this something you're planning to do long term or do you actually want to get rid of? So Holly, for example, do you want to leave your teaching job? Um, and Shaniqua has answered the question already. So you want your baby to grow into a full grown adult um, and make that, um, and okay. And the other side of that is to turn your full time into contract or part time. And that's it, isn't it? It's the balance. So we start off with having this full time corporate job and this little baby side hustle, as Shanika called it. And most of us want to gradually increase this and gradually reduce the um, full time corporate job. And of course, the ideal, at least as a transition, would be to either ask for it to be part-time, that would be fantastic if your boss were to agree with that because then you have the time and energy to work more in your other business or potentially, and I've seen people do this, you quit your job and then become a freelancer or contractor working with that same business. That's fantastic because they already know you so you don't wanna burn your bridges with your former bosses um, and in fact, it's sort of an easy win. You know the business um, and you're kind of hanging on to the life raft. You haven't quite made the leap into your new dream business, but it's a great transition again to get immediate clients and money coming in. Okay, Holly's in the same situation. You wanna leave teaching. Okay, fantastic. So, um, well, not fantastic, but I'm happy for you that you're here and that's what we're talking about. Um, okay, so we have a few people with full-time jobs, little baby side hustles, and we're transitioning into the side hustles. So the way I want to approach this, and let me know if you, again, have specific things you wanna cover and you don't think it sounds like I'm going to cover it and I'll do my best, um, but I think the um, question about how to manage your side hustle effectively alongside a demanding corporate job, which is how I think it was Joseph phrased it, so thank you, Joseph, for, for, for proposing that topic. Um, I think the reason why that is such a struggle and why we're asking the question in the first place is because of time and energy. So that's what I want to look at first of all, the sort of energy and mindset around running a side hustle alongside that corporate job. And then secondly, the time. So of course there are time management things we can do and prioritizing and so on. Then hopefully we have time because I'm already babbling on um, lots at the beginning, always um, enjoy talking to you guys. Um, but the last piece of the puzzle I think is really the business strategy. So knowing what to focus on in that limited time you have. Now, obviously that's a massive topic in terms of how to build your brand, 
how to do marketing sales, but I want to distill that into a couple of focus areas so that when you have, let's say, five hours a week, 10 hours a week, whatever it is, to work on your side hustle, you really know that you're working on the three big things that are going to make the difference in your business. So Holly's saying, I'd like time freedom as you have a family and teaching doesn't fit with family life right now. That's interesting. Teaching, I guess, stereotypically, we think, you know, the hours work with a family, you have long summer holidays and so on. Um, but of course, the time freedom is something that's so appealing to many of us. And as you guys know, if you've been part of my community for a while, I'm a strong believer in, you know, running your own business. Whether you're a freelancer, consultant, coach, whatever you want to call yourself, is the best way to have that time freedom. Um, and Holly, I don't know if you saw a few weeks ago, I was writing a few articles, we did a topic on um, managing a business with a young family. If you, have, if you haven't seen those, um, I tagged Catherine in the post um, earlier today, so I'm happy to share those with you as well. There's some more tips there as well. Theoretically, it is the same principle with, with the family. It just means you're even more time poor probably than if you um, only had the job and the side hustle. Um, but it's, it still certainly brings some specific challenges as I'm sure you're all very much aware. Um, so again, those are the two areas I wanna focus on, the mindset and your energy, and then time, and then a few um, sort of business strategies for how to focus. Of course, you guys all have specific um, businesses. So if there's any sort of, um, I don't know, nuance or, or dynamic in your business that you want to point out or highlight that doesn't quite fit, then let me know and we can try to um, bounce some ideas back and forth as well. But first of all, then the mindset and your energy. Um, I think, I mean, it's easy to, to see the issue. We have a full time job already. We're all working harder than ever before. I used to get migraines in my job. I was working overtime even when I became a consultant, so-called time freedom. I was working long hours um, and staying late in the office and traveling back and forth to Amsterdam and so on. So um, with technology now, we're always on. It's no longer the nine to five that I keep calling it. Um, it really overflows into the evenings, weekends, holidays, and bosses can contact us or whenever and we're sort of expected to be always on. Um, so it's easy to see how difficult it is um, to then add a business alongside of that. It seems almost impossible and I think for that reason a lot of people don't even try. Oh good Holly, no I know you're new here, I haven't seen you around so really happy you've joined the workshop and I'll definitely tag you in those posts as well. Um, and again let me know if there are any other questions. Um, so the, the energy piece I think is really tricky. Now the first place I'll start, and Holly you might not know this because you're new, um, but I always start with what success looks like for you. That's the big question. Um, Simon Sinek would call it start with why. So why do you want to start a side hustle? So in Holly's case, and many of our cases I think, you want the time freedom, right? You want time with your family. I'm sure you can paint a very vivid picture for yourself and you've given this a lot of thought as to why this is so important to you. We want to do more meaningful work and leave a real legacy behind, um, maybe inspire our children, be role models. You know, there are lots of big um, topics, issues now, causes that we, a lot, uh, we care about a lot and we want to work towards, maybe rather than working just again on those PowerPoint presentations and Excel sheets. We wanna do something more meaningful. We want to do something we enjoy. We want to work less, maybe we want to travel. We want to have a young family. All those reasons are incredibly important. And whether you use a vision board, if you're familiar with that, you know, having pictures up on the wall so you really can visualize and have that in front of you every day, your dream life, as it were, what you're working towards. You have a blackboard with your specific goals and you have a note in your wallet or, or whatever it is to remind yourself why this is so important to you because it is going to be hard, let's face it, it's not gonna be a walk in the park. Um, anyone who tells you it's easy to start a business, especially alongside a full-time job, um, is lying. Um, so if it's that hard, you really need to make sure, first of all, that it is something you really want to do. And then secondly, you need to remind yourself, remind yourself why you're doing this, why is this so important to you, because that's what's gonna motivate you to go the distance, right? To actually put in that extra effort, rather than coming home exhausted at the end of the day, plonking down in front of the TV watching Love Island, which I don't do <clears throat> um, here in the UK, or whatever it is, watching Netflix and so on, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with watching a bit of TV, but obviously if you have this big dream you're working towards, you may need to make some sacrifices. So it's incredibly important from a mindset perspective that you really are clear on that this is important to you and why it's important. Oh, Simon, <laughs> fellow migraine sufferer. Yeah, I have seen a trip tan as well. Um, I'm very sorry to hear that you still have them after leaving. I must admit that I, um, we can have a separate conversation on this, not to bore everyone else, but I also had a few um, since I left as well. 
um, bizarrely much less stress related. My first ones came when I had um, did my university finals at Oxford, so pretty directly linked to my um, my stress during those final exams. Um, but when I got the semen trip done, that does actually work. It doesn't prevent, but it does um, sort of help once I have the symptoms. Um, but in any case, um, sorry to meet a fellow migraine sufferer, but you know, other people might have um, other chronic illnesses, stomach problems or back pain or whatever it might be that are associated with the way in which we work. And that could be another reason why we want to escape that particular job, the stress, the um, desk job. You know, I have very bad posture. You'll see in these videos, I tend to sink lower and lower, which is something I need to work on as well. Um, but all these reasons are so, so important. So number one, in terms of your energy and mindset, you have to know that this is worth it. The second part of that, or the other side of the coin, I think, is you need to remind yourself that the job still has a purpose as well. You're choosing to do this business as a side hustle alongside your job. Um, you could quit and you can still make that choice, but you know when you find yourself being really frustrated, thinking, oh God, I can't stand this job anymore, I hate it, maybe you don't hate it, you're just exhausted, or you just feel like you're not growing anymore and it's just boring, whatever it is, remind yourself, look, this is a means to an end. I'm earning money, this is giving me the safety and security that I need in order to be able to experiment with my side hustle and work out, you know, who my clients are, what my strategy should be, build that audience and so on. So it's important to remember the why for the business, but also remind ourselves that the job still serves a purpose. I should put in here a caveat, um, I'm not a legal expert, but you know, when you do this side hustle alongside a job, you do wanna make sure you don't have sort of a non-compete clause, um, some kind of conflict of interest, depending on what your business is gonna be. Um, so you may or may not want to disclose it to your boss, but make sure legally, you know, in your contract that there's not something that's said uh, that could get you into trouble later on. Um, we struggle sometimes with, you know, advertising our new company on LinkedIn when we're still in a full-time job, so need to be a little bit sensitive about those things. So again, first of all, the purpose, and I'm going to consult my notes to make sure I cover everything I wanted to cover, but the purpose of your side hustle and also the purpose of your job. And the second thing from a mindset standpoint is to be patient and think long term. Because again, it's so easy to want to turn to your boss and say, I quit, to take that leap, as I did, I must admit, um, you know, to go traveling, to go all in your business, you're so excited. Um, but the risk is then that maybe the business doesn't work as well as you thought, maybe you don't even enjoy it as much as you thought, you get really unfocused, because the truth is you tend to fill the time you have. In fact, there's something I think called Parkinson's law, um, where, you know, the more time you have, the more the job that you have at hand will expand to fill that time. So ironically, um, you know, if you have days and days stretching out ahead of yourself, you might not be as productive as you thought you might be. So um, again, from um, sort of a timing perspective, this is not something you wanna rush. Hopefully, we're all young. I know there are some people here and here are retired and working on their business, but you're still young. You're young enough to have many years ahead of you, hopefully, um, you know, knock on wood if we're fit and healthy. Um, and so this is not something that just needs to happen tomorrow. It's fantastic that we've decided we want to do this, but it's totally fine for it to be slower. In fact, doing a business as a side hustle is by definition the slower path. Um, but again, we're choosing to have a bit more safety and security, maybe because we have um, children we need to take care of, dependents, and maybe we're just a little bit more risk averse, whatever the reason. Um, so again, remembering that job serves a purpose. Um, it is gonna be a bit of a slow haul, um, but we're in there for long term and we don't wanna give up too soon. Um, again, I see so many people who have sort of gone full into their business, found that it actually didn't take off as quickly as they thought it did because generally it doesn't, and then they've gone back to full-time job, which is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it's not um, what we want to do. So again, think long-term, be patient, results take time, um, but they will come, and this, again, will be a slower process, but also means that you can transition more gradually, you'll be much more confident, and once you do decide to go all in and turn that baby into an adult, as Shanika was saying, um, you'll be in a really fantastic place to do so because you will have qualified the idea, done the market research, built your audience, and you'll feel really confident that this business actually has legs. Um, and then the final piece, and again, because Joseph, when he um, brought this topic to um, the group, talked about the demanding corporate job, right? And we were just talking about migraines. And um, so I wanna say, you know, put your health and well-being first, because it's all very well to go into time management techniques and to say, oh, set your alarm for two hours earlier, get up at four, come home and work late into the evening, work every weekend, um, you know, do your lunch breaks and so on. But the reality is, um, a lot of us are leaving the jobs because we're almost burning out. And the last thing we want to do is to burn out from adding this business on top. 
Um, so, you know, we can talk about um, all the business strategies, time management, whatever it is, but there's no point in me teaching you those things or you learning those unless you have the foundation of good energy and health to begin with. So, you know, if um, you know that you're struggling at the moment, you're absolutely exhausted um, and you just need a break, then give yourself that time. Again, be patient, know that you're in this for the long haul, make sure you take care of that. You know, I have clients who sometimes say, you know, I just haven't made as much progress as I'd hoped. It's totally fine. Take a weekend off, go to nature is one of my favorite things, you know, go down to the beach, go to the ocean. We don't quite have beach in England as such, but um, you know, at least go down to the sea um, or just go for a walk, have a long bath, whatever it is. Um, but this is really serious and I don't want to be, um, you know, over simplifying this, but I really think that the foundation, if you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the foundation of safety, security, well-being, um, you know, feeling fit and healthy is critical. So that's what I would urge you to do. Don't put too much pressure on yourselves. Be patient. Um, and especially again, to reiterate the point, if you're building the side hustle alongside your full-time job, by definition, it's going to be slower and that's okay. So know that you taking the time to, you know, maybe get an exercise regime in place or to get a bit better with your food or, or to sleep more, whatever it is, is going to really set you up for longer term success. So that's from sort of the energy and mindset perspective. Any questions on what I've said? Does that make sense? Um, is it helpful? Are there any other aspects around sort of managing your energy between the corporate job and the side hustle that would be helpful to cover? Um, otherwise I'll move on to sort of time and then again we'll finish with um, the business strategies. Um, but I'll just give you a couple of um, minutes there to see if there are any questions on that. So again, remembering your why for the side hustle, remembering your why, i.e. the purpose of your business, or your sorry, your corporate job still, remembering that still has a purpose and being patient to think about the long term and above all putting yourself and your family you know your health and well-being um first so i'm not seeing any comments if anyone can say yes no ask any questions that would be helpful so i know that everything's still working and um, but if not then i'll move on to the second piece which is time because again i think these are the two biggest issues with managing the side hustle alongside your job one is the energy feeling you know how on earth am i going to do this on top of the job that I'm already doing and then the other is time. Great, it makes sense, happy to hear it Holly. And by the way, I've been painting maybe a bit of a bleak picture, I'll just throw in a positive note, which I'm sure you guys have experienced too, Holly, Shaniqua, Simon, you haven't told me yet what um, kind of balance you're doing with your side hustle, so if you want to share, that would be great. Um, but the good news is that actually when you add a side hustle, a business, a passion project, whatever you want to call it, to your already full plate, ironically, because it's something that's an outlet for your creativity, for your passion, um, something that's really getting you doing meaningful work, out there doing new things, growing, learning, and so on, it actually reinvigorates you. So I find, in my experience with my clients, that actually it makes you both, um, it gives you more energy both to focus on the business and, again, very ironically, rejuvenates you for your corporate job because it gives you sort of a, a purpose and again the ikigai the reason for get out, getting out of bed in the morning and um, that Japanese concept and um, it gives you that kind of north star to work towards whereas you've kind of been plodding along in that comfort zone for years maybe even decade or more um, and suddenly you have this exciting thing you know whether it's something like um, beginning to paint I met someone years ago I know who said who they loved, pa loved painting and they suddenly realized hey I can get up in the morning again a couple of hours earlier which I'm not going to do but they got up early before work and started painting amazing and um, my boyfriend's colleague gets to work in the morning and spends two hours writing on his books which is incredible so you know if it's something that you love doing um, I know there's that cliche of, um, you know, if you find something you love, then you'll never work another day. It's not quite true, but there's definitely an element of truth in that actually putting this new thing onto your plate can bizarrely free up both time and energy. I'm just seeing some comments come in, so I'll just see. So Shanique was saying, makes sense. Need to remember that forcing myself when I'm too tired is having a negative effect. Yes, exactly, Shanique. And to stop procrastinating when you're not tired, yes. Well, yeah, first point, absolutely. Um, don't give yourself a hard time. If you're exhausted, and I've done this before, you know, what good is gonna come from you forcing yourself to sit at the computer to try to write something? I know I can't write a blog post if I'm not feeling sort of inspired or focused. So yes, we need to be efficient with the time and it's frustrating if you happen to have an hour free and then you, you don't have the energy. 
But as you say, it just has a negative effect. It's not going to be good quality work. You won't enjoy it and you'll probably give up too soon. And then the other piece, stop procrastinating um, when you're not tired. That's an interesting one. I think there's a lot of things underneath there that we can dig into, but hopefully having the really clear priorities that we'll talk about um, in a few minutes will help you. Um, I find, you know, if I've decided, okay, I'm going to work in my lunch break or do this at the end of the day, if you then sit down and you're ready to go, hang on, I don't know what I should be working on right now. Whereas if you have a priority list of the three days and three things I need to do today or 10 things for this week or whatever it is, you know that the second you sit down, boom, blog post, uh, content theme, social media, emails, whatever it is, you can get straight to work. So hopefully we'll um, break those things down, Shaniqua, but, but um, really important comments and definitely you're not alone there. Um, so Simon is saying, yeah, health issues. Um, uh, losing the energy regular folk have for a site. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, so I mean, of course, this is very individual. So I mean, again, especially if you have a particular, you know, health um, concern, then please, please focus on that and um, be patient. You know, actually, you know, my whole brand is about taking one step. So the little steps over time will make a massive difference. And I'd venture to say that you'll get further than someone who makes, you know, massive effort quickly and then gives up later on. So plugging away, you know, writing a little bit here and there, eventually you'll have a book and posting again and again, a little bit now and then, a short little post will build your brand and audience. Um, you know, and again, remember your why. Is it important to, to push yourself to, again, burn out? Is it that important to that point um, to get things done by tomorrow? Or is it okay that actually, you know, you're gonna enjoy the journey, you're gonna go a little bit slower, but you're gonna feel better for it and take care of what's really important. So, you know, again, for all of us, let's be patient and um, compassionate with ourselves as well. So as, you know, as much as a lot of us are ambitious and alphas and whatever we wanna call ourselves overachievers, you know, it's important to um, take, take it a bit slowly and um, enjoy the process as well. Great, so thanks so much for sharing your comments there. So that's on energy. Now, time. Um, I already hinted at it and the first thing I want to talk about is getting clear on your priorities um, because you know let's say and I don't know does anyone has anyone thought about the, nu the number of hours you have in the week have you tracked your time to see actually um, you know I've got okay five hours every week or ten hours or um, three lunch breaks or do you know how much time you have and have you actually set that time aside for your side hustle because that's already an important thing to do just map out where the time is um, but having the clear priorities, knowing what to do um, each hour that you do have is incredibly important. We'll get to that in a few minutes when we talk about the strategies and the priority areas. Um, but it's easy to say, yes, I'm going to work on my business. And again, as I was saying, sit down at the computer, don't know what to do. Um, or, you know, you've got a big topic like um, build my brand. But what does that actually look like in a day to day? Whereas if you can get super clear on these are my priorities, I consistently need to every week do X, Y, Z, and then that's gonna be much easier. And when you do have a little window of time, and they're going to be able to focus on that. So get super clear on your priorities, and this is a tricky one, but learn to say no, which I know that we're not very good at. Um, you need to be able to say no to things that are not your priorities. If you already have your health, your family, um, your full-time job, this new business, and I'm sure a host of other things, um, you are gonna have to do some prioritizing. It's very difficult to say no to other people's requests, but if it doesn't fit with these priorities, if it's not you know, something that's really important to you, um, we may sometimes be um, obligers, as Gretchen Rubin calls it, if you know the four tendencies, we want to sort of people please others, um, and to, of course, we want to help other people, but I think we need to, again, um, preserve ourselves make sure that we're learning to say no to the things that um, you know are coming our way and not necessary priorities. It also means you know compromising and not doing everything right now. Again I always say I've got my piano here that the plant is sitting on that I haven't touched in months. I have a ukulele that I play very little on. Um, I haven't done so much massive traveling the last few months for various reasons but we can't do everything all the time so I'm choosing to focus sometimes on my business more, sometimes on family um, and it's just that constant continuous juggling act you know so making clear priorities and then learning to say no to the other things so Shanique was answering you know the set times when you're at home and can set your computer and work fantastic and that's one important block right you really need that that big chunk of time when you have you know in my case I've got the light ring and the 
um, stand for the phone, I've got my um, webcam, I've got the podcasting microphone, sometimes you need that equipment. There might also be some extra slots of time, um, let's say in your lunch break or on your commute or first thing in the morning or waiting um, for the school pickup or whatever it is when you could do some little tasks as well. So that's something to think about. You've got both the obvious chunks of time when you're at home at your computer, but also some little times when you can fit in some um, sort of mini jobs as well. I talked about blocking your calendar. So if like Shanika, you know certain hours of the day is when you're going to be home, maybe you only work part-time in your corporate job um, or that's the contract um, that you have or um, you do half days or you have full days, whatever it is, look at your week and it might vary from week to week, that's fine. Block your time. So think, okay, I've got the lunch breaks. Um, I've got, you know, first thing in the morning before everyone wakes up. I've got the commute. I've got an hour on the train, maybe if you're lucky. Um, I've got the evenings, weekends. Now, be totally realistic and I know it's difficult. Think about what's really feasible. Again, considering your energy levels, are you a night owl? Because otherwise there's no point in planning three hours late in the evening. Bear in mind your relationships. You know, if I work every night, if I was here talking to you every evening, then I wouldn't have a great relationship with my partner. Um, think of your family and so on as well. Or are you, you know, um, a, what's it called, a morning lark? If you're an early bird, um, then maybe you can get up early in the morning. But don't fill every single minute of every day. You need space, you need rest, you need exercise, you need to eat. So don't just stay at your computer at lunch as well. But again, look at your week and block out time when you're going to intentionally focus on your business. Having those time blocks on your calendar, then we can look at what to do in each of those hours. So Holly's saying the time available differs, so you try to give at least five hours a week, great. And that's a great goal to have. So at least five hours, and then you can have a stretch goal of, you know, sometimes more. But if you know you're doing five hours every week, again, as I was saying um, a minute ago, in terms of um, taking little steps, that's gonna make a massive difference over time. But be intentional around it. Shanika was saying you have a lunch break, but it changes. Again, I'm not saying that you have to work in your lunch break and, and it's not necessarily the right thing for you, but just think a little bit creatively in terms of where you have different slots. And in fact, um, a couple of people were asking, and again, I mentioned it to Holly, but um, Catherine was asking earlier today around um, managing the business alongside a family. Now, obviously each age of your children is going to bring different challenges. Um, and again, the principles remain the same. Um, but think about creatively how, you know, as I said, if you're waiting at the school for the pickup or if you're breastfeeding, you can be sitting, you know, answering social media messages. And um, I found a thing that I can do, which is like go for long walks and then I can, of course, listen to podcasts and so on. But I found that I can actually dictate blog posts um, by just speaking into my phone. It's built into the Apple iOS. I just speak into the notes. Now, obviously, it doesn't transcribe perfectly what I say. Um, but actually it means I can just, while I'm outside walking, um, getting that fresh air, nature, um, obviously by myself I can't be chatting to other people, um, but I can then talk into the phone and then when I get home I've got basically a blog post I just need to edit a little bit rather than sitting at my computer for an hour writing that. So again, you know, think creatively about little slots when you can fit little things in. And in fact, in terms of your priorities, maybe um, when we look at our priorities we can say if I need to... Um, write blog posts, I need to record videos, I need to send emails, whatever it is, you can assign a value to that in terms of time. And I know that the blog post will take a bit more time, I need to think creatively, I need to write it, whereas recording the video just takes five minutes, or answering some people on Instagram only takes a couple of minutes. And then you know when you only have five minutes, or 10 minutes, you can look at your list of 10 minute tasks, five minute tasks, and you can go boom, work your way through that list. So that's quite a concrete thing that you can do. You have your priorities, you assign them sort of a rough time allocation, and then you can actually slot those into the slots of your calendar as well, if that makes sense. Um, and then specifically, again, setting goals and working through them consistently. I think there's a lot of overlap here, but it is worth um, mentioning again. If we just come to our computer and go, yes, I'm gonna work on my business today, probably we're not gonna get much done. If we have a deadline, if we know that I want to quit my job and go full full into this business by, I don't know, December 2019, then we have that, we can work backwards and we can we know that, okay, that means we need to have earned this amount of money, we need to have this many clients or whatever our criteria are, we can break down what does it take to get there and um, what do I need to do consistently each and every week. Now, there are two types of goals. You can have one is sort of results-focused goals, so that might be income or even number of clients. 
those are results that we don't have 100% control over. As much as people might tell you, you know, you can set your income goal and you can, you know, triple it or whatever it is. Um, ultimately, there are lots of factors that will affect how many clients you get. Um, you know, I can do my very best efforts in terms of a challenge and a sales call, whatever it is, and then maybe people decide they don't want to buy and there's not so much you can do. You can learn for next time, um, but you don't have 100% control over that. So it's important to have some sort of results focused goals, but then also some action focused goals. And that's where you can be really motivated because, okay, if I want three clients, that means I probably need to speak to, let's say, 10 different people. And if I need to speak to 10 people, that means I need 100 people coming to my website and that means and so on. You know, you can really work backwards and think, okay, I need to contact 10 companies in order for maybe two or three of them to actually respond to me. I need to um, get on the phone with five people in order for, again, maybe two or three of those to buy, whatever it is. I need to pitch my article to 20 magazines every week um, in order to, you know, ultimately hear back from whatever percentage you want. Um, so it's a little bit about the conversion rate of, of how many are going to come back to you and you'll get that with experience. But again, have the results focus goal as a motivation to know I want to earn £3,000 or whatever it is by a certain time but also then the action focused. Again, each week you're gonna write three articles, you're going to pitch five magazines, you're going to write this many blog posts, you're gonna record a podcast, whatever it is. Um, so have really clear focused goals. Um, it's so much easier to work on these things and to make progress if we actually know what we're doing. So does that make sense in terms of time? Um, you know, again, such a massive topic in terms of managing our time, but ultimately, um, you know, focus is critical. Um, blocking the time, sitting down intentionally, looking at our calendars, even if it varies, as Holly said, you know, week by week, Shaniqua said the lunch varies as well. Try to sit down maybe on the Sunday evening, Monday morning, whatever works for you. Look at your week and see where you're going to block the time to work on it. And then you can intentionally, um, you know, use that time to work on the priorities that you will have identified. Um, so time blocking, get super clear with your goals and actions as well. So I'm seeing that we've already gone 45 minutes, so I don't want to keep you too long. So I want to spend um, the last chunk of time on really what you should be filling that time with. So are you clear on what you should be doing to build your side hustle? Because I think that's the question. So when you, um, you know, Holly, when you have those five hours, do you know what are you currently spending those five hours on? Um, do you know what you're working on? Are you super clear on sort of what you need to do to get to your goal? Um, and same for Shaniqua, you know, when you're working on your um, little baby business, do you know exactly what you need to do? And um, so let me know, um, and Simon as well, you know, what, what's your current situation? And again, anyone watching the replay, let us know. Um, because that's, again, so critical to know what you want to be focusing on. So I want to talk through a few priorities and obviously we can't talk sort of the whole business strategy um, but uh, let me know if there are any specific questions we can always continue the conversation conversation offline but the first thing I have to re-emphasize is focus so in terms of business strategy and in fact I used to work at Procter & Gamble big corporation multinational um, American company um, and we had the catchphrase I think from the CEO at the time A.G. Laffley and um, he said that um, strategy is choices um, the definition of strategy is making choices we can't say we're going to win in Europe and US and Asia and Australasia whatever it is we can't say we're going to do luxury and low end we can't say we're going to target teenagers and um, you know mid-career people whatever it is you know and parents and so on we can't have our cake and eat it we can't target everyone especially if we're running the side hustle alongside a business we have a limited amount of time we can't do the whole blanket approach. We can't say we're going to target, um, you know, I'm simplifying, but you know, men and women and all ages, and I'm gonna both be a virtual assistant and a social media manager and a writer and this, that, and the other. And I'm gonna help people um, leave their jobs and start their businesses. And also I'd like to help them to, uh, I don't know, build a house or whatever it is. You know, we can't do all the things um, because we have only limited time. So strategy is choice. And we have to be super clear on what it is we're prioritizing in terms of who our client target is, all the usual business stuff, you know, what we're going to focus on, what we want to stand for in our brand, which social channels we're going to choose. Ultimately, it may be that you end up with all the things. You may end up, end up with, as I have, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram and so on, but you don't have to start with that. Again, just to add some colour to this to um, give you an example, when I first started back in the day 2013, I just had a basic website. 
I started blogging because I was a writer, that was sort of my strength and that's all I did. Then I added emails and you know, there's a lot of stuff to learn in terms of tech and so on. So I started sending, I think a monthly email initially, um, which then became fortnightly and now is weekly. Um, then I, let's see what else did I do, I started tentatively to do some videos which were complete flop, I didn't do very well at all, but over the months and years I've become more confident and, and comfortable doing them, live videos as well as recorded. I started some webinars, I published a book, I added a podcast, I launched group programs, but no way could I have done all those things and certainly not alongside a full-time job. So, you know, it's about layering. And again, we're in it for the long haul and we don't have to do all the things right away. We can start with the little building blocks and build the foundations first of all, and then we can add layers as we go. So let's see just a few more comments here. So Holly says, excuse me, my nose is tickling. And I have to split my focus on recruiting as well as customer gathering. Um, but recruiting is your main focus. Okay, but that's great that you know that you've got those two building blocks. I'm sure lots of sub headings under that as well. Um, but you know that recruiting is your main focus because you, it's really helpful to have one priority that you know if you literally only have one hour this week, what would you do with that? And if you did one hour every week, you know, what would make the biggest difference? And Shanique was saying, you've got a mishmash, so you've got to reach out to potential leads and you've got to onboard clients and under that is continue to train your service. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that is an important building block too, growing professional development and um, learning new skills as well. Working with a coach or mentor, going to trainings, doing a course, that's a building block as well. So again, if we have five hours in a week or 10 hours, whatever it is, we need to be super careful on where we spend that time. And what we have to remember when we're starting a business is that it's not just, as Janique was illustrated, it's not just doing the work. So for me, let's say I have 10 hours, I can't just do 10 hours of coaching because where are those clients going to come from? I need to do marketing, I need to write stuff, put content out there, I need to talk to people, I need to have consultation calls where I can talk to people about my programs and see if it's a good fit and, and invite them to join me. I need to, well I don't need to, but there are all these things that I'm doing in terms of Facebook challenges and messaging people and so on. I need to do the finance piece, I need to do admin, um, I need to work with my coach, I need to do a course here and there for a new skill and so on. So you know, again, 10 hours or five hours as Holly's saying, we need to be so, so careful that we're focusing only on the most important things, but there are unfortunately a lot of different elements um, that we need to do. In fact, I didn't talk about that in terms of um, time, but a couple of very practical strategies, of course, um, depending on whether you have more time or money, are A, automating, using systems, and in fact, um, we've talked about this in the past too, so again, if that's something that's interesting to you in terms of automating, um, creating systems that will work for you and your business, then let me know and I'll um, send you the link to those articles as well. Um, but using systems is a great way um, to you know, make sure that you're leveraging your time as it were, rather than duplicating the same effort again and again, you set something up and then everybody gets the same email or they're taking through that process, the email sequence, or um, you know, I have some webinars that run automatically recorded, um, whatever it might be. So it, of course, um, weekly newsletters that go out automatically, although I have to still write them and schedule them. Um, social media posts can be scheduled, you know, so using technology to your advantage is all the more important when you have less time in those few hours as well. And the second piece, again, if you have more money than time, because I'm assuming you have this full-time corporate job, you still have that salary, is you can start to outsource. And again, I have another post on this as well that I can share um, in terms of even if you think of yourself as a freelancer, a solopreneur, I'm starting to outsource sooner rather than later. And in fact, um, I did a training with Shanique on this um, a while back. Unfortunately, as I said at the beginning, we had some tech issues, so I wasn't able to um, share the video afterwards. Um, but outsourcing, getting admin support, whatever it is, you can get someone, you know, start very simply. You can have an intern, you can have a low level junior VA, whatever it is, but begin um, sooner rather than later to get support as well, because that's again, a way to leverage your time better. I just see the comments that are coming through. Um, so Simon's saying, going to focus on the most likely to generate immediate revenue and completing personal development project which may generate leads contacts. I love that. And what I love about that, Simon, especially, is that you're combining both the short term and the long term. Um, and that's always tension that we have the short term need of, you know, we want to generate income right away because that's the way we can keep going. That'll give us the confidence to know that we're on the right track and that will make it easier for us to eventually quit and turn that baby into a full blown adult business. But on the other hand, we also want to work on the longer term, which is building the audience, um, you know, building our personal brand, having that vision. 
It may be in the short term we need to compromise in terms of working maybe with clients that we won't necessarily want to work with in the future. Um, maybe we'll work more closely to things like, for example, working with our um, old or current job in the freelance capacity. Um, you know, leveraging our existing network and skills and so on. Um, in the PR Shiatsu example I shared before, you know, we might do more PR work, for example, um, before we then begin to do the Shiatsu. However, one warning or caveat there, um, I really think that if we, when I know that if we fill our time with those money generating activities um, that aren't necessarily fitting with our longer term vision, then we're not actually moving towards that vision, right? So again, if you have five hours, 10 hours, whatever that number is, um, bear in mind that if you take on projects that aren't a good fit for what you want your future business to look like, you're obviously filling up your time, you're not then working towards what your dream business should be. Um, and so you need to say no to some of those projects again in order to be able to say yes to the right projects. So it takes a bit of, um, I guess, embracing the risk and having the faith that the good projects will come. But again, think of the long haul, um, grow it slowly and focus on how you want your business to be, the clients you wanna work with and don't just focus on the money. But as Simon's saying, you've got the short term immediate revenue and you've also got the longer term work to do as well. Um, if you guys, uh, I don't think any of you were here at the time, um, but some of you watching the replay maybe were part of the client generation bootcamp earlier this year, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the marketing or sales funnel concept. Really, those are the elements we need to be working on in the business. So we need to be um, you know, raising awareness that we exist, which is maybe um, going on podcasts, um, other people's podcasts. It could be posting on LinkedIn. It could be um, you know, cold calling. It could be Facebook advertising, whatever it might be. So raising awareness, attracting people to who you are, letting people know that you exist. The second piece we need to do is to engage with people, respond, message, have conversations, do a Facebook Live, um, maybe share free content, message back and forth, really have those conversations um, and let people get to know you. And then, of course, we need to actually close, convert, sell, whatever you want to call it. And that's probably, you know, in my case, it's having consultation calls, um, it's doing these challenges, um, whatever that is. It might be a webinar, um, but having those um, actual sales events, conversion events. So ultimately, um, and you know, I'm trying to distill a whole sort of business branding strategy in just a few minutes, but ultimately we need to be doing all these things. Um, however, again, as we said with Simon, it might be that you have an immediate focus, which could be, and probably should be at the beginning, to raise awareness that you exist. So whatever it is you do at the beginning, and I don't know how long you guys have been working in your businesses, so how early on you are, but there is no time like the present to start building your audience. Um, you know, I think a lot of us naively think we can just put up a website and then ta-da, we'll get lots of clients. I raised my hand, I certainly thought that I came out of my coaching um, development programme and I thought, look, I'm a coach, I put up my website, that's it, ta-da. Um, but of course it took a long time to write those blog posts, to send those emails um, and to build that brand and audience. Um, and that's fine because, say it with me, we're in it for the long haul. Um, however, it does take time, so you need to start building your audience sooner rather than later. So I feel like I'm throwing a lot of things at you. So again, let me know if that makes sense. Um, I think a couple of you here see, seem like you're, you're in a pretty good place in terms of knowing what you want to focus on. But again, I just reiterate, take a step back. Um, and in fact, you know, taking a step back and looking at your strategy is also a, a time block that needs to be on your um, calendar, really. So um, looking at the time you have and then um, looking at your priorities in terms of, okay, the first thing I'm gonna do for the next three months is just going to be single-mindedly creating awareness that I exist. I'm gonna email everyone I know, telling them that I'm now a freelance, whatever it is. I am going to um, you know, be really active in all these Facebook groups so that people see my name and, and they're interested. I'm gonna post every day on LinkedIn something interesting to raise awareness and of my skills and so on. So that's single-mindedly focusing on building an audience, raising awareness. You're not even trying to sell, you're at the very top of the funnel. And then maybe you can say, okay, what are we now? August, September, October, you maybe say as, as of November, I'm going to start really engaging. So I'm gonna start going live in my group. Um, I'm going to start, um, I don't know, messaging people. I'm going to start a more proactive, interactive, maybe networking or going to events, whatever it might be. And then, of course, you can still be selling during this time, um, but know that you need to sort of take people through that funnel in order to get to the selling anyway. So you can't sort of just start selling today. We need to build that foundation. Um, but having those um, sort of seasons in a way, having, you know, this quarter is going to be raising awareness, the next three months will be more engagement focused, that will really help you um, to focus. 
And also in terms of layering, you might say, you know, this month I'm going to focus on LinkedIn and then in September I'm going to add Instagram into the mix. So you can use that strategy um, for all the different questions that you have. I'm going to pause there, we just have a few more minutes, so I'll check my notes to see if there's anything else I wanted to add. Um, I appreciate, I've sort of talked at you a lot, so really appreciate the comments and questions that have come in from you guys. Again, if, you're, if you have follow-up questions, you who are on here live or anyone who's watching the replay, let me know and we can get into those. But to do a bit of a quick recap, and I hope I've answered sort of the um, intent of why you guys have come, and if not, let me know. Um, but I talked about the energy and mindset needed in order to have the motivation and discipline to work hard on your side hustle alongside that demanding corporate job. We talked about the time management, right? So first of all, mapping out um, how much time you do have and blocking your calendar um, finding slots for, you know, one hour slots, half hour slots, 10 minute slots, five minute slots, um, so that you really are clear on what you can do and when. Um, be creative in terms of, you know, as again, breastfeeding, going for walks, sitting on the bus, whatever it is, there's lots of things you can do. Sitting on the toilet, for goodness sake, you can message people and post, maybe don't go live on the toilet, but there are all sorts of other things you can do um, in the bath, you know, so being a little bit um, facetious, but you know what I mean, that there are lots of little windows of time that you can use effectively. Um, and then finally, we talked about looking at the priorities. I will consult my notes here because I know I had a few things I wanted to say, but yes, we have covered them. So making choices and focusing, thinking about that marketing funnel, um, using tools and starting outsourcing. And the one thing I didn't say, and maybe we'll end on that note, is you know at the beginning, um, really what you need to be doing is talking to people. It's very easy to be internally focused. And so if you have five hours, Holly, and again, I know nothing about your business, so apologies, but let's say you've got five hours in the week, um, I could spend that time working on my beautiful website and logo and business cards and designing a webinar and designing all this stuff and writing a book and goodness knows what else. And, but that's very internally focused. Ultimately, what we want to be doing, what we need to be doing is going out there, talking to people and um, letting them know we exist, doing market research that we can learn if this is something that's viable um, and ultimately then selling to people. So although, you know, I come from a digital marketing background, I'm a big fan and a believer in having websites and social media and so on. The reality is you could very easily start a business simply by having conversations with people, talking to them, um, even, you know, just starting with a Facebook group or something. You don't have to have all the bells and whistles, the, um, the complicated tech and so on. So the big thing is don't get too internally focused. Don't sit at home using those five, 10 hours, whatever it is, um, you know, painting an elaborate strategy, um, designing logos and whatever it is. It's much better to go out there. Done is better than perfect. Talk to people again, think about it for the long haul. You can tweak as you go. You know, I've seen my coach, for example, if I look back to just where she was a couple of years ago, I was always, you know, her website wasn't great and her pictures are a bit sort of, uh, but she was amazing and, and her message came across and I valued her um, strengths and her experience and skills and she was an incredible coach. Now I've seen a few years later, she's now invested in a much glossier brand and things look amazing. They're developing an app and so in addition to the, the website, you don't have to have all the pretty things, all the perfect things when you're first starting out. These are very general broad strokes because again, I don't know what your individual businesses are and we can talk about the specifics of those. But in general terms, having conversations, being externally focused, building that audience and again, thinking through that funnel um, is what we need to be doing. So being super clear on what our priorities are when we have those few hours to work on. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. We've come to the end of the hour. Thank you so much, Simon, Shaniqua, Holly for joining. Anyone else watching the replay, um, give me a shout out so I can see you're there and let me know your questions. Joseph, I know that you asked um, about a specific issue about time zones. I'm not sure I can answer that because I'm not entirely, again, aware of the details of your business. Um, I think the general response I'd give, you know, when you have an issue, for example, that you have clients in a different time zone to you, I think it's important that your business works both for you and for your clients, right? So it's up to you to decide who your clients are going to be. 
most of us or many of us do want to work globally these days so we need to think about that you know when i go live now i know that some people you know in asia will find this is too early and um, other people are still at work in america and um, luckily people can watch the replay and um, i also have cara who's actually based in the us so that helps to maybe cover a different time zone but again it needs to work for us i don't want a business where i have to be getting up at three in the morning to go live so that's something to consider but of course if you do have a specific business that you're passionate about that you want to work on where perhaps your clients are in a different time zone, you need to find a way to work that, around that. So maybe you have a team that's based in a different location, maybe you have to shift your day, um, maybe there are ways to automate certain things um, and to work around that. But Joseph, uh, just a specific one on that one because I know this is your topic, so do let me know if you had any questions there. But thanks so much again, everybody, for watching. Um, keep the questions coming in. I haven't seen any questions come in the last few minutes, so I will end it there. And I wish you all a wonderful evening. Really enjoyed being here with you tonight. Hope you got value from today, looking at how to manage your side hustle alongside your full-time job. I've mentioned lots of other articles, so if any of those sound interesting to you, let me know and I'll ping those over to you. Um, and look out for the vote, the poll for next month's live training, as well as the poll for the five day challenge, which is coming up next month. So again, it's sort of a workshop on steroids. It's gonna be five nights in a row, big topic, big progress, worksheets and all those fun things. Um, so do let me know as well if you have anything you'd like me to cover. Thank you so much, Holly. I'm really happy to hear that it's given you confidence um, and some extra things to think about. And again, I'll ping you those articles that I mentioned. Um, anyone else who's new to the group as well, hello. Thanks so much for joining and let me know if you have any questions. Um, but I'm happy to hear that you'll be working towards that time of freedom with your kids, which is what so many of us dream of. Thank you, Shaniqua. Thanks for joining and Simon as well. We can discuss our migraines offline as well. Um, but I wish you a lovely day, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I hope to see you all soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.